what's happening? Paul Ingram here with Collie Center and uh, welcome back to the channel. In today's training, we're gonna do a little bit of a knife experiment. We're gonna find out today, am I gonna break my thumb on the saber grip thrusting hard or will I not? So give this video a thumbs up. I'm putting myself at risk here. Make sure to leave me a cool comment below and subscribe to the channel and let's get to today's experiment. One of the most common comments that I get when I'm talking about this saber knife grip is, dude, one, it's a weak grip. Okay, that would tell me that you don't understand the anatomy of a grip, but I also get this one a lot. You're gonna break your thumb if you thrust in that grip and you thrust hard. Uh, let's find out, maybe, maybe not. So we're gonna do this experiment on something that is fleshy. Okay, obviously we're probably not gonna be thrusting a brick wall, so we're gonna leave that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, just kind of experiment with it a little bit. So I wanna make sure that we're using enough force that the knife would penetrate. So if I was to thrust into human or whatever, all right, that's probably gonna be enough force to cause some damage. So this is what we're looking at. Oh, fuck. Um, so far, my thumb is good. So far, it's not broken. Um, you know, I'm hitting the ribs right there because that's what people say. They say that you're gonna bust your thumb up if you thrust in the saber grip. So I figured let's try it without the knife first. And, ow, fuck, dude. Bash my, uh, I'm like, really, I'm probably gonna have a bruise right here, but uh, you know, so far, my thumb is good. Let's take it to the next best thing. Now, I know there's no bones in there, but thrusting at that force is enough, I would say, is enough to get the knife inside, right? It's definitely enough force. So, doing it without the knife, if I'm thrusting my thumb into this, so far, is that broken? Okay. So let's go ahead and use the knife. So that way we got the length of the blade. Okay, I figure that if we use my thumb, then obviously we took the, the blade away. Let's use the length of the blade and thrust again. And, and maybe it's different. Maybe my thumb will break this time. <clears throat> right there, okay, so it didn't break on the first thrust. Let me make sure that we're at a, a good level here. This is just to see uh, if this comment is true because I'm curious. I mean, I have been training this way for a long time now, for like probably close to, probably over 10 years now, I've been training with the saber grip. And uh, in sparring and everything, I mean, I've landed a lot of thrusts and I, I've never broken my thumb yet. But I haven't done a concentration drill like this. <clears throat> Maybe I need to be higher, something more solid. <clears throat> So far, it doesn't feel broken. Like I can thumbs up, bring it down, and go back up again. Nothing looks out of place. There's no swelling. I don't know, maybe I'm not doing it right. So I'm using this flexible knife, so that way I can drive this all the way in and, and get my thumb. Let me see if I can show you guys. I'm trying to see if I can get my, get this thing to jam in there like that. Like, that's what I'm doing. I'm jamming my thumb. Only I can. I must not be doing something right. My thumb's not, my thumb's not getting busted up. I mean, I'm trying in the head too, like it's, I'm putting force in there. Like that would be enough to drive this thing right through someone's face. And I'm in the saber grip, I'm not cheating, I promise. Um, I think it's safe to classify this comment that if you're in the saber grip and you go to thrust, you're gonna bust up your thumb. I think, 
uh, it's it's safe to say that's an urban legend. I, um, it's just simply so far it's not true. Maybe if you do, maybe maybe if you do break it, maybe it's because you you weren't in the saber grip the right way. Uh, that could be maybe like you know if your saber grip is like this instead of you know how it's supposed to be. I think a lot of people think that this is a saber grip with your thumb up, which that's not. It's down. Your thumb is down. So it folds into it. Like I said, I don't know. You could be the judge. And uh, we had the two experiments. I took my thumb and thrusted my bone, my rib cage with it. And uh, I know, I know, you know, you're not going to thrust yourself as hard as you would someone else. Um, but I mean, you guys can see. I, uh, I jammed my thumb into me pretty good, and it was back, right? I did it where my thumb was coming back. I didn't do it this way, like in the real saber grip, where the thumb is down. Um, so yeah, I'm sure if I thrust it into like a brick wall, it'd probably break, but probably if I thrust it in a hammer grip into a, break, into a brick wall, I'd probably also break something. I'd probably break my thumb, I might break the knuckle of my forefinger, and I might break my wrist, but I don't know why somebody would be thrusting into a brick wall. Do you, Bob? Can, do you know why anyone would be thrusting a brick wall? Because they missed their target and they smashed their hand into the wall. But anyways, I think I, it is safe to deem that, uh, that comment of, you're in the saber grip, you're gonna break your thumb when you thrust somebody. I, I think we can classify that as false. Um, maybe you gotta go try it, you gotta experiment with it. Make sure you are in the correct saber grip, you're in a true saber grip. Um, I don't agree with this Filipino martial arts thing like where they do the clip that I don't agree with but uh, yeah the saber grip It's a pretty secure grip because you got your three primary gripping This is what you actually grasp with so a lot of times that just tells me that people probably don't know uh, You know what each component is doing for the grip uh, It's like in jujitsu, you know when you're doing like lapel grabs and stuff. You don't grip with your thumb It's basically a saber grip because the thumb is down. And uh, that's a really, really strong grip in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like when I was learning grappling, we did not grab like this, like on, you know, on the clothing and certain areas of the body. We always grabbed like this. Because when you grab like this, right, there's other manipulations that you can do that, that can cause a thumb to break. So we were always taught in my grappling to grip like this, which is basically a saber grip. Right, um, because it's a strong, it's a stronger grip because you don't have uh, the weakness of the joints in the thumb, and uh, and you are less likely to get your thumb broken when you grip like this in grappling. So it makes sense in grappling. I just wanted to, you know, kind of experiment a little bit, put my own thumb at risk, thrusting. You know, you be the judge. You tell me if I thrusted Bob hard enough that that would have done damage or not using a flexible knife so I know that my thumb is going to make contact to Bob. Also thrusted myself with the improper position in the ribs, so that was I was hitting bone. That, that I felt that more in my body than I felt that in my thumb, to be honest, to be frank. Um, but now you can be the judge. So leave me your thoughts, your comments down below. I'd love to uh, hear them and read them. Um, if anybody actually thinks that you're still gonna break your thumb after this, then maybe you need to do some training. Uh, if you don't like the saber grip, then don't use it. Use the grip that you like. But if you, uh, you know, if you gotta do the experimentation yourself, then grab a rubber training knife and grab something that might resemble what you would be thrusting and give it a try. Never take anybody's word as gospel. When I was training with, uh, with Tim Wade, of Pekiti Tersha, one of the things that he used to say to me all the time that just, I live by it to this day, is make sure as the practitioner that you validate the material for yourself. You have to do the training, or as Tim would say, you have to enter into the laboratory and you have to do the training, you have to test the knowledge, and you have to come to the validations for yourself. So don't take any teacher or any YouTube comment or any other student or practitioner's word for it. Get out there and go train and go put your knowledge to the test in training. Validate your knowledge, validate your skills, and let that be how you come to your conclusion, not being swayed by anybody else. 
Now I knew that my thumb wasn't going to get broken in this exercise because I've been doing this exercise for like the last 10 to 12 years. I've been working in the saber grip. I used to train in the hammer grip and uh, that was really because I didn't know about the saber grip and I didn't train with it before. And when I learned about it and trained with it and started developing with it, then I did the comparisons. Sometimes I'd go saber grip, sometimes I would go uh, hammer grip just to compare and contrast. Do this in your own training. Right? You have to come to your own conclusions because it's your skills. Right? And if it is self-defense ever needed in self-defense, it's your life. So don't be swayed by a comment on YouTube. Don't be swayed by this video. Get out there and you train, you experiment, you validate. And then I'll catch you back here next time for some more Kali training, some more Kali fun. And remember to get outside and make nature your Kali dojo. Head over to KaliApex.com and go sign up to my online school. I'm going to give you everything for a half price. I got the links down in the comments below and maybe I'll see you there. See you later. What did I do?